Uh, we'll get into our big takeaways from last night. We'll also get into our big question of the day. Who are you happiest for? Uh, now the Celtics have won a title. Uh, a lot of you voting for Al Horford. We all answered differently. Uh, so we'll get to that coming up. Uh, but Kevin in Maine's been waiting very patiently. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey, how you doing, guys? Kevin from Benefit, originally from Waltham, disabled vet. Uh, uh, first of all, shout out to WEEI. I've been listening a million years. I want to shout out with WEEI. That probably started everything in sports radio, going back to Eddie Endelman, oh, Mr. Yeah. Hot Dog Safari <laughs> at Wonderland. That raised a lot of money. It did. It did. So um, I went. To, I went to a few of those in the, back in the day, career. Kevin. I went to a few of those. Yeah. Yeah. Any rate, uh, my thoughts on last night's game. Uh, the, my only criticism. Um, everything was great in the bench and whatever. Uh, Missoula's young coach. I know that. I. My only criticism, I think, with the Celtics for this year, I thought the Celtics with their strength and everything, um, not about the bench, was driving to the paint. Okay, so I I was surprised and impressed, maybe is the better word, at how much Tatum went to the hoop, not just in this series, but specifically last night. And it wasn't Tatum's best offensive game, meaning scoring the basketball, but... You know, he made a point to get in there and mix it up and drive to the basket, and I thought that was noticeable last night. And he also referenced Joe Mazzulla. Joe Mazzulla is an option in our big question of the day, uh, who you're happiest for. Again, you can vote there. You can also weigh in at 617-779-7937. Before we get to that, and just beyond the obvious, they finally did it. They're champions. What, what What's your big takeaway from last night? What jumped out to you, Mego? You were in the building um, you know, over these last whatever it's been now, I don't even know, 16 hours uh, since it wrapped up. Um, you know, what's your, your big takeaway from looking back at last night? I think the biggest thing was that it was more than anything else, just a sense of relief among the core guys in the team that have been here for several years. If you think back to the different groups of Celtics that these guys have gone through from Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, Al Horford in his first stint, Al Horford basically fleeing the city because he didn't want to play with Kyrie Irving anymore. And then, you know, bouncing back once Brad Stevens became the GM or president of basketball operations. And listening to the guys post game, I might be projecting, but I did feel like there was a little bit of a different sense of celebration and accomplishment between the two groups of Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Al Horford, guys who were, like, so desperate for this, versus uh, Drew Holiday, who was asked, does this feel different than the last time you won? And he just goes, no, (laughs) not at all. And Porzingis, who I think had a different kind of desperation, that's a guy who came into the league as the unicorn, and he was supposed to be something so different and so special, and, you know, basically bounced around with his injuries and everything, and then ended up here with an injury and being able to be part of it, and... uh, like, I just think, and then somebody like Derek White, who said Joe Missoula basically, like, saved my career. And so it, it was a lot of different sentiments, but I felt like overall, it was almost, it's funny because we've had the conversation about how they're a super team, but I think they see themselves as outside of the two J's, a little bit like the island of misfit toys. It's like KP's a guy who was supposed to be a superstar, and he bounces around. Derek White's a guy who basically had to go to junior college before he could get uh, any kind of, you know, the scholarship to play college ball and then Al Horford is benched in another city I don't know it was just it wasn't exactly what you would expect from guys who are pretty much bona fide superstars I sort of I don't know I mean like not bona fide superstars I agree with you there because that was never Al Horford or Derek White but these were guys who all had success in the league Horford was the third pick of the draft right that White was a first rounder he was barely a first rounder but he had success in San Antonio before he was traded here so it's not like he really you know completely came out of nowhere I would say that uh, the main thing that I think is going to stick around from this to me anyway is sort of how it felt inevitable it felt inevitable that these Celtics would eventually break through but you weren't sure when it was going to happen because it seemed like it should have already. Like, watching all of that last night, you're sort of watching it going, man, like, these guys 
are finally here. They finally won. They probably could have won at least two or three by now, you know, if a couple of things had gone their way or if Jason Tatum hadn't hadn't done what, or disappeared in the finals or any number of other things. Kyrie hadn't quit, whatever. Uh, but the fact that they're there now, I think what stood out to me the most was more so even than when Giannis won, more than when Jokic won last year, more than when LeBron won in the, uh, in the, in the bubble or any of that stuff. It seemed like, okay, something's happening in the league right now. It's not just this team winning. Something's happening to the league with this team. They're, they're doing something. Yeah, and so you say it was inevitable they were going to win. I, I didn't feel that way. You know, I, I didn't necessarily feel that way. I thought they should have won by now, and I thought they definitely had the talent to win, and they were the most talented team in the league by, by far this year. We all knew that. The second they traded for Porzingis, the second they added Drew Holiday, we all knew they were the most talented team in the league. But they had been the most talented team, I, I think, before. It, they had been wild in 2018, 2019, that year with Kyrie is last year here. They were ridiculously talented. Mm. They were out in the second round. They lost to Miami last year. They should have beat the Warriors in 2022. So that's not to take away from what they did last night. It's just to say, maybe you felt it was inevitable. I did not. I had real questions about how it would work. Can Tatum and Brown win together? Should they move Jalen for somebody who fits better with Tatum? I didn't like the Derek White trade when it happened. I thought they gave too much up for a role player. You know, Porzingis, can he stay healthy? Is Missoula the right guy? Can Brad work as a GM? Like, these are all questions I had about this whole operation over the years. And I was wrong about all of it. And so, again, today's the day to talk their talk. I'll, I'll play you some of Tatum coming up because I liked uh, the one-on-one he had after the game. I was intrigued by the commercial they put out seconds after they won the title as well. So we can get to all that. And, and to me, it ties in with the big question of the day up now at Jones and Mego. Who am I happiest for? I'm happiest for Tatum. I've doubted him. I, I, I wondered if he could be the best player on a championship team. I wondered if he could lead a team, and he got a lot of help from Jalen Brown, a lot of help, and a lot of help up and down the roster. But I'm happiest for Tatum because I think there were legitimate questions for Jason Tatum. I know not everybody feels that way, but legitimate questions can Tatum win, and he shut people like me up. And so that's how I voted, Arkan. How'd you vote? I voted for Jalen Brown, and it was for some of the similar reasons that you just mentioned for Tatum. But for me, I look at Brown, and I think that the questions about him were much more perilous to his future in his career. And I know he just signed that big uh, extension, so maybe this is a year too late for that. But there was a question of whether or not he deserved it. There was no question of that with Jason Tatum. You know, like there was always the question of when they came up short, what's going to happen here? Who's the problem? Why? Who's at fault? What's the reason for this? And it seemed like it always ended up being Jalen Brown. That's what people would sort of conclude. And if you wanted to move on, you'd have to trade Jalen Brown for any of these other people, which we talked about for years, Jones, trading for uh, James Harden or Paul George or Jimmy Butler or Kawhi Leonard or Anthony Davis or who the hell else ever. Yeah, there's, and all these there's other probably names. more, yeah. Probably, yeah. Ben, I, I might even said Ben Simmons one year. <laughs> like, honestly, that's what happened happen you go you go through these names I'm not proud of that but uh, that's what happens and with Jalen Brown it was always on the table it was always a possibility and whenever that conversation came up I think part of the reason they were so annoyed by it is because it meant well which one of us is the problem who's who's to blame for the fact that we haven't won yet and now you can't say anything about either one of them but in particular Jalen Brown being the MVP of those two series the two ones that clinched it for him and made them champions I feel the best for him I said Jason Tatum as well. Like, I was very happy for Jalen Brown because I, I agree with all your sentiments. But for Jason Tatum, this was what he needed to be considered a great. Like, a Celtics great, an all-around NBA great in the future, depending on how the rest of his career goes. You just talk about guys who don't win a championship in a different way. Like, whether it's James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Carl Malone. Like, guys who have won the regular season MVP, guys who have had really deep playoff runs, guys who have been in the finals. We'll see what happens with Joel Embiid. He was out there talking his talk and everything. Like, I I just think that those guys put get put in a different tier. And to me, this really... We, we talk about Tatum ceiling a lot. We have for years. How great can he be? Uh, he's got a lot left to still accomplish. He can still get a regular season MVP. He can still get a finals MVP. I think that's all great to drive him. But this is the biggest thing and I think the hardest thing that he had to get. So you can vote. Uh, Al Horford running away with it right now at Jones and Mego. You can vote for Tatum as Mego and I did. You can vote for Jalen as Arkan did. Not enough of you voting for Joe Mazzulla. Let's get the state of Rhode Island out there. Can we write in Peyton Pritchard? Uh, maybe. Somebody wrote in uh, Porzingis. Uh, you can uh, you can weigh in uh, on Saw the phone. Saw a lot of people writing myself. Or in the comments as well. Which is nice. 
Oh, you? No, no, no. Them saying, like, I'm happy as for oh, me. Oh, I'm happy as for me. I see. Not you, but uh, themselves They're out not there. saying for, for Mega and Adelini. So you can uh, vote at Jones and Mego. Meanwhile, as an example of Tatum, and, and I think this is mostly genuine. I think the thing with the Garnett homage is a little forced at the beginning. But I think it was mostly genuine from Tatum, and I don't, I don't disagree with any of it. Jason, just what's it feel like to finally be a champion? Oh, my God. It's, oh, my God. It's a surreal feeling. We did it. We did it! Oh my God, we did it. So much emotion. We saw you feeling it all when you came out of the game. Just can you can you try to describe just what you were feeling? Man. First of all, God is the greatest. Not because we won, but to put me in positions to maximize my God-given ability to, to surround me with these guys, my family. This is an incredible feeling. I'm lost for words. I'm sorry. How did what happened in game four, just how did that impact the way you guys came out here tonight? We responded all year, and this is no different. And we owed our crowd, our fans. It's been a long, it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey. Jason, the expectations all season long have just been so, so much. It could have smothered you guys. Why didn't it? We have a resilient group. We've been through a lot as a team over the last couple years, over my seven years. What they gonna say now? What they gonna say now? So, uh, again, I said this earlier. I don't know. Maybe that you weren't NBA Finals MVP. I mean, that's something we could say. But in general, I I like that approach from Tatum. There's nothing you can say. Uh, for everybody who doubted you, I doubted you. I doubted the combination. I doubted this team. Can't say anything. Uh, he doubled down on this, by the way. Did you see he did this on social media as oh, well? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. what, you're gonna, the, the, what they're going to say now is the uh, official catchphrase. Is that going to be? Uh, of the Jason Tatum victory tour, I it's think. It's going to be yes. a new, uh, new T-shirt. see some T-shirts. Uh, I can imagine. Uh, and so, uh, look, I... I, I have no problem with Tatum talking his talk, is my point. And I think this was a genuine a genuine response to a team that was genuinely doubted. I I don't think this was was fake. Like, the, the Rodney Harrison Patriots became a little fake at a certain point in time. Oh, nobody believed in you. We all You won three out of four Super Bowls. You were dominant. You were the best team. This is a team that was genuinely doubted, genuinely questioned. Should we split up the Jays, Mego? And... I, I have no problem with him doing that last night and continuing it today. He deserves it.